Now I'm going to talk about exchange rates, which are the price of one currency in terms of another currency. Now a lot of books talk about the European Euro, which is a multi-country currency, common currency, the British Pound, or maybe the Japanese Yen, which are major world currencies. I tend to talk about the Mexican Peso and have numbers based on that. Now, exchange rates are important because they use the fundamentals of supply and demand in terms of international trade in currencies, but there's some mathematical concepts that are sometimes a little bit different. Um, one is that it, there's no definition of what is up and what is down. If you talk about a currency going up, you don't know if you're talking about the dollar going up or the peso going up, but sometimes the number gets larger as the currency is losing value. So understanding the relationship between how these numbers are depicted is important. And so understanding the numbers as well as percentage changes and a couple formulas help the whole idea make a little bit more sense. So first of all, when I talk about a currency, I talk about E for exchange rate as foreign divided by home. That means units of foreign currency divided by units of home currency. In this case, you could say Mexican pesos per U.S. dollar. And so if I say pesos per dollar, that would say that one dollar could buy 10, 12, 14, 16 pesos. But if you're taking it from the other point of view, you could say, well, how many dollars does one peso buy? So if you had 10 Mexican pesos were one U.S. dollar, then you could also say one Mexican peso this is the reciprocal. So you would simply say 1 over 10 or 0 0.10 US dollar. And so it doesn't matter if it's 10 to 1 or 1 to point 0.1, it's the exact same relationship. And so a lot of times currencies are quoted, maybe you could say that the dollar rose when it's actually talking about the value of the euro. So it's important to understand that there's, you can sort of get turned upside down pretty easily. But this is simply the reciprocal. If I were to have 12 Mexican pesos equals $1, then you could also say 1 Mexican peso equals 0.083 US dollars or 8.3 US cents. So this is simply 1 over 12. All right. So now this is important because if you see here, these three letter codes are used around the world. Every currency has a three letter code. MXN is the peso, USD. You could also see JPY for the yen or EUR for the euro. Every country has a code. Sometimes you have to look them up. ZAR is the South African Rand. BRL is the Brazilian Lira and some other ones. But uh, when currencies are traded, they usually have three letter codes. And I didn't do it here, but they also are quoted to four decimal points. So this would actually be 0.0833. So this is simply the reciprocal. It doesn't matter whose point of view is. It is still the same relationship between currencies. Now, if you were to have a currency change from 10 pesos to $1 to 12 pesos to $1, that means that each dollar buys more pesos. So the buying power, the strength of the dollar has gone up. If you go from 10 to 12, it means $1 buys more. That is what's called an appreciation of a currency. Now, if you were to look at this, this would be a 20% increase. So you can actually use the percentage change formula from 10 to 12 is 20%. So it's a 20% appreciation. By definition, you can say if the dollar is strengthening, then you have to say that the peso is weakening because, again, it's upside down. If the dollar goes up, the peso has to go down. And so if you say, well, 0.1 to 0.083, the dollar or the dollar value of one peso has increased or decreased. The dollar value has decreased because the purchasing power of one peso has gone down even though uh, the dollar has gone up. Right, so it's the same numbers presented. If a number goes up, the reciprocal must go down. All right, so you can use the percentage change formula to say that 12 minus 10 is 2, 2 tenths is 20%. Right. So appreciation is the strengthening of a currency, and it can be measured in percentages. Depreciation is the weakening of a currency. So as the dollar is able to buy more pesos, one peso is able to buy fewer dollars. And this is going to be important because, generally speaking, this affects trade in goods, and therefore it affects a country's GDP and inflation. Now, the third equation here is the real exchange rate. Now, this is adjusted for prices just like any other currency or any other macroeconomic variable. There's real wages divided by prices. Real GDP controls for prices. This, because it has two countries, it's two countries' point of view, it actually has both countries' price levels. All right, so the idea, for example, is that the Japanese currency is 80 or sometimes 100 and at times 300 per dollar. So the Japanese currency is very small in terms of its unit. 
prices in Japan are much higher and you would actually expect there to be two zeros on the end of any price in Japan. But because every price, the yen itself, prices and wages and everything will have more zeros on it, it will actually cancel out. So if you make the real rate, which a lot of times is given Q, you're taking the exchange rate and you're bringing in both price levels. All right, so for example, if this exchange rate was 12 to 1, 12 pesos per dollar, you would expect an item that costs $10 in the U.S. to cost 120 pesos in Mexico. So in other words, every price would simply be multiplied by 12. And so if you do this, the dollar signs actually cancel out. This is in dollars, this is in dollars. This is in pesos, this is in pesos. In fact, all the letters and all the symbols cancel out. And this would actually lead to a number that is simply one. All right, so if all is equal in a perfectly functioning economy with no tr trade barriers or taxes or transport costs or anything getting in the way, this equation would mean that prices would exactly equal out with the exchange rate. Sometimes this is called purchasing power parity, or PPP, but this generally doesn't hold. So PPP is this idea that the exchange rate should exactly equal goods prices, differences. All right. And why is that? It's because if you found that a product was too cheap in another country, you would actually purchase it in that country, ship it over, and make a profit. And so sometimes people talk about what is called arbitrage. Arbitrage is the opportunity to make money or make a profit off of price differentials. So if international finance worked perfectly, there would be no price differences. People would buy low in one country and sell high in the other. And what happens when you have these price differences is that the act of buying and selling actually changes supply and demand, or changes demand in both countries, equalizes the price. So if you ever see something that's too cheap, the act of you buying it will actually push the price up and make it no longer so cheap. So arbitrage is this price differential profit opportunity. And so we talk about how prices should be equal in two countries, it's simply saying that, that if something costs $10 in America, you will get 12 to 1 at the border. You get 120 pesos. You could buy the exact same product for 120 pesos. And so if you look at it in real terms, in terms of a product, one product in America and one product in Mexico should cost the same price. Now I'm going to change this and say, well, what if the dollar were stronger? I'm going to say that it should be 12, but it's actually 14 per dollar. Now you can take $10 in America, turn it to $140 in Mexico, buy a product for $120. And so you actually have 20 pesos left over. And so what this would be is 1.167. And so a lot of times the real exchange rate is greater than one. The dollar is overvalued. It's too strong. It's got too much purchasing power in Mexico. You can buy too many items. And so you actually can buy more products in Mexico because of the stronger dollar. At the same time, you could have a, if it's less than one, you could have a currency be undervalued. In other words, it can't buy enough in another country. So the real exchange rate can show how a currency is valued relative to what it should be in the market. Sometimes people look at the price of Big Macs. If you look at the magazine The Economist out of Britain, they, they look at Big Mac prices around the world. And Chinese Big Macs are cheaper than they should be because the Chinese currency for a long time was weaker than it should have been. Um, some countries in Europe, like Norway, have extremely strong currencies. Norway has oil money, so their currency is too strong. Big Macs there are really expensive. So this is simply adjusted for prices. It gives you a number that is one if things are exactly equal, but if it's greater than one, the currency is too strong, and it's less than one if the currency is too weak. All right, so these are the formulas that we're going to deal with. The first idea, again, is that one country's up is another country's down. As the dollar gets stronger, the, pe the peso gets weaker. You can actually use these numbers to calculate percentages, but strengthening and weakening is appreciation and depreciation. Real rate is adjusted for prices, and then you can talk about real, uh, real exchange rate, which is sort of a measure of competitiveness. You can say that competitiveness changes with this real rate. All right, the last thing I'll talk about is just some more equations. This is sort of like the budget deficit. Balance traded if exports are equal to imports. In other words, a country's money coming in for its exports is exactly paying for what it's buying from abroad. But if a country is bringing in more money for exports and purchasing less, it is running a trade surplus. 
Likewise, if it is importing more than it exports, it is running a trade deficit. So sometimes people talk about this. This is actually part of the GDP equation. The, G, the X minus M can be negative if a country is running a trade surplus or a trade deficit. And so a trade surplus actually makes GDP grow even more. And so we'll see these equations with math. Just keep in mind that if you can keep track of what is up and what is down, keep in mind the fact that prices change with exchange rates and that will affect exports and imports, then you'll have a better understanding of how exchange rates affect the macroeconomy.